I've got five predictions I'm going to give you for 2023. Hello, Mark Homer here and welcome. So this year has been very, very busy. Um, we've had huge supply side shocks uh, after opening up post pandemic. Clearly, um, it's not been an easy ride for lots of businesses, um, which has meant that um, prices have increased uh, because there's been more money chasing less supply, less goods and services. Therefore, prices have gone up. Before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe and hit the bell. So inflation is now 10%. Um, because of that, the Bank of England has increased uh, the base rate. Mortgage rates have, have gone up significantly and therefore the price of property has started dropping. Uh, in fact, in this area, I think we've seen price falls of 10 to 15% already. I think when the froth comes out of a market, you probably see 5 10% drops straight away. Uh, I think we've seen at least 10% around here already. Uh, the converse, the opposite, is happening with rental, the rental market. More people are renting because they're not buying. Um, and um, rents, you know, we, we, we've seen rents from sort of, I don't know, even in the last maybe six months, especially on the HMO, especially on the smaller stuff, um, maybe go from 550 a month to 650 a month on a room. Um, little three bed houses that a year ago might have been more like 750, now they're more like 850, 900. Um, so rents are going up. This year, um, 515,000 people came to this country. That was the net migration figure. Um, the government is building nowhere near enough houses. There has been a shortage for many years and we just keep taking more and more people in. Uh, and lots of migrants have babies as well um, and they need to live somewhere. Um, so this is pushing um, you know, demand higher and higher. There is a, a lack of supply um, in the whole of the market, especially in the rental market. Um, and um, as interest rates have gone up, affordability is becoming more and more stretched. Um, people can't afford uh, the same level of mortgage that they could before these interest rate rises um, started this year. Um, therefore, less people are buying and house prices are now falling. Um, and you'll probably see, you know, inflation is probably going to be something like 30, 35% over the next five years. Um, and if house prices have already dropped 10, 15%, you'll see the real um, price of property drop by about 50%, I expect, if, if house prices don't go up, and they probably will start going up again uh, within that five year period. But um, yeah, we're, we're on course for at least a, a 30, 40, 50% drop in, in real house prices. Um, I'll go into what I think will, will happen um, to absolute house prices, you know, the, the, the sort of um, pound, shilling and pence number rather than the after inflation number uh, in a second. Prediction number one, the markets think that base rate is going to 5%. I think the Bank of England will chicken out. I think they're they may get to around 4% and, and, and that could be terminal base. Um, does that mean that they'll have controlled inflation and it's suddenly going back to 2%? No. Um, it's looking increasingly likely that these price rises have spread um, to wages. Um, wages are now going up um, significantly and as wages go up, if, if you know, sort of train drivers get a 10% increase or nurses get a 20% increase, that goes straight onto prices, which goes back onto wages and it just carries on going round in this big inflation loop. That's why the government has got a, such a tough job. Um, lots of these unions, lots of people striking, think the government uh, is being really unfair at the moment. Um, but, you know, if they give in to one, uh, all that will do is generate a load more strikes um, and the unions will just go, oh, they've given it to them, therefore that's the starting point for our wage negotiations. That will go straight into prices and it will just keep going round and you'll, you, you won't be able to control inflation. So um, the Bank of England really needs to incre increase interest rates significantly and, and probably quite a bit more than the 4%. Um, you know, there was a, an interview with Mervyn King, the old governor of the Bank of England. It was a very honest interview. He's not the governor anymore. And unlike most people, he actually really understands this stuff in detail because he used to do that job and he's an economist. 
Um, you know, and he said it, they printed too much money, they engaged in too much QE. In fact, he says they shouldn't have done any QE during the pandemic uh, because this was not an issue of demand. Demand was um, artificially shut down. Um, and he also says that interest rates should have gone up earlier and faster, and that might have, uh, uh, you know, reduced um, some of the issue that we're seeing now. Uh, I suspect they won't. Uh, I suspect they'll that they maybe get to four and start to chicken out. They probably need to go a lot higher uh, and create a deeper recession, and unfortunately, more unemployment to break this vicious circle that just goes round and round. Uh, in, into wage increases and then into price increases in goods and services and that back, back down into wage increases. It needs to be broken and it needs to be brought down to the 2%. Uh, I suspect they're going to allow inflation to run higher. So, you know, my prediction there, you know, number one, base is probably, it gets to terminal sort of low fours. Uh, but the second part of that um, is that inflation isn't going to go back to the 2%. Uh, and over five years, I suspect, I suspect the value of your pound is going to drop up by about a third. OK, so we've got this great property report. If you just go down below and click the link, it'll come straight down to you. Go download it now. Prediction number two. I think rents are going to continue to increase probably about 10% over 2023. Um, I think more and more people are going to be moving down the ladder to smaller properties. Couple of reasons: a, energy prices. Um, second is affordability, uh, and that's the big one. They can't afford to buy or rent the the property that they could last year because prices have increased in terms of rent prices have gone up. And if they want to buy, yes, the property price might be a, a little bit cheaper. But you know, mortgages of the mortgages on the high street have probably gone to from say two percent to about five percent. So that's a big shock uh, if you're going into a new mortgage. So. More people are going to be looking for smaller properties. Uh, we're seeing it, you know, we've got lots of renters downsizing uh, because they can't afford uh, the new rental levels. Lots of our landlords are having to put rents up just to keep pace with their mortgage payments. And if they've got HMOs, their electricity and, 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 and gas costs, and of course maintenance has gone up as well, along with, you know, sort of trades and, and, and all the materials they're buying. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a big sort of, um, push for rooms, more and more HMO rooms, um, and, um, and, and smaller properties. They, they, they're sort of going down the chain. It's almost the opposite of what happened during the pandemic. There's a rush back into the major conurbations, back into the cities, uh, and flats are very, very popular. Prediction number three. I said earlier that uh, I think house prices have probably already dropped 10, 15% in lots of areas of the country as the froth has come out of it. Uh, properties are still falling. Do I think this is going to be a sort of dirty crash and we're going to see 30% at the coalface? Because by the way, I'm talking here at the coalface. I'm not talking about the numbers you see as an average on, you know, Nationwide or Halifax, which is, is lagged. It's all delayed. Uh, that stuff takes a while to, 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 to come through and, and is an average. Um, you know, I'm, I'm talking here what you can go and buy a, a property at if you negotiate. Um, you know, because transaction levels have, have reduced quite a bit. Little three beds, we'd have seen coming on, or, you know, you'd be able to buy in, say, 190, 195. You can probably get those at 160, 165 now uh, in this area. So we are seeing money coming out of them, and I think that will continue. In fact, over the next year, I think you'll see another 5 or 10% uh, come out of the prices of those properties. So, you know, if you add that, you know, say a 20% drop, um, in, in, in the price, along with the inflation that you're going to see just over that two-year period, which is probably 10% a year, which is another 20%, you'll probably see just in that two-year period, maybe a, a, a 40, could be, could be a 40% real terms drop in house prices. Obviously, the, the, the sort of real headline price, or the headline price is, is probably 20% less, so maybe it goes from 100 to 80 um, but if you count, if you introduce inflation into that equation as well, you've probably got a, as the value of the pound drops, you've got a 40% reduction in real house prices, which is um, significant over a two year period. Prediction number four, the national house builders are cutting back. As less people are buying properties because mortgage interest rates have gone up, 
uh, and the affordability is therefore stretched, they can't afford the same monthly payment, they're buying less properties from the big national builders. So they've already started reducing sites that they're bringing forward, mothballing certain sites. Yes, they're still building, but they've seen something like a, a 25% drop in the demand for their properties. Um, so there's going to be less houses built in 2023. Uh, the, as I said, migration was migration levels, net migration was 515,000 over the last year. Um, that means that um, 515,000 more people came to this country than left. Therefore, um, if we're not keeping pace with these extra numbers uh, and catching up with what's happened in the past, um, then there's going to be even less houses and there's going to be even more of a property shortage. Um, so I think the rental market is going to get even firmer uh, over the next year. Um, and you know the medium to long term picture on sort of residential um, property market sort of shortage is going to grow. Prediction number five, the renters reform bill went away, we thought, with Michael Gove. Michael Gove's back. He's reiterated that he wants to introduce it. Uh, which is uh, where he's going to repeal, he's going to remove the Section 21, so landlords aren't going to be able to evict tenants for any reason. There's going to have to be uh, a specific reason like um, you know, rent arrears or antisocial behaviour. They do say they're going to beef up uh, the provisions to enable landlords to evict for rent arrears because uh, the courts are very slow and often, you know, if a tenant sort of brings their rent within two months arrears, then the eviction process starts again. So they can keep playing that game over a period of time. Um, and that can um, cause landlords a big delay in getting their property back from a, uh, from a bad tenant. But yes, he says he's bringing it back. Now, I don't think that will be in 2023. I think it's probably more like to be in 2024. So the section 21 will go. Rent increases will be limited to once a year um, and there's going to be a new landlord ombudsman scheme as if there weren't enough. Uh, there's already one for letting agents, there's going to be one for landlords and it also says that landlords are not going to be able to have blanket bans on benefit tenants. The reality is um, that most uh, benefit tenants will not uh, meet the referencing criteria of the vast majority of landlords and letting agencies. So not a lot's going to change. I just suspect the uh, process will change a bit and the adverts won't be able to say no benefit tenants. If the benefit tenants can't meet the referencing criteria, i.e. Their, their benefit income uh, doesn't come up to the level um, that is required um, to service that rent, then they're not going to get the property anyway. I've been Mark Homer, over and out.